I'm writing this document to warn everyone to never accept an invite from the user Killjoy88 or visit the Virgin Massacre site. It's a twisted dark website dedicated to showing the torture and murder of innocent girls. Avoid that vile site at all costs. Let me start from the beginning. I used to be a fairly normal college guy until recently. I had a small group of friends, mostly kept to myself, and browsed the internet all the time. I was particularly interested in shock sites. Anything that got a surprise out of me was always thrilling. My life was always so mediocre, I needed something to break the mediocrity. I needed something that could wake me up and feel alive. My viewings began with simple fight videos and then escalated to near-death accidents. It made my stomach turn, but at the same time, I could feel my blood boiling with excitement. I searched various forums on the best shocking violence sites until I saw this one user mention the Virgin Massacre. Everyone on the forum was confused and had never heard of it before. He went under the alias of Killjoy88. He said that the Virgin Massacre was this dark website that even the police couldn't track. The guy rambled on about how it hosted a library of videos where schoolgirls had to go through death traps until they faced a butcher at the end. None of us were sure if we believed him, and quite a few called him an outright liar. Talk about red rooms was common on these types of forums, but no one could ever prove they existed. I was neutral to the idea. I had no doubts about humanity's potential for wanton cruelty, but red rooms always felt more like an internet urban legend. Isn't it odd that the danger of these alleged sites was never made public, but some random guys on an obscure forum had all the details? Some people would do anything to look cool, even if meant pretending to be a connoisseur torture porn sites. Still, I had nothing better to do with my day, so I asked Killjoy to give us a link to the Virgin Massacre. He, of course, made up some shoddy excuse about why he couldn't do that and how he would only give the link to someone he trusted. My eyes rolled so hard I almost worried they'd pop out of their sockets. It was clear that Killjoy88 was yet another attention-seeking troll with a poorly thought-out story. Everyone else in the forum called him as such. The chat was filled with laughing emojis and colorful insults that got a few chuckles out of me. I was more than a little surprised when I got a DM later that day from Killjoy88. He said that since I was the only one who didn't mock his story, I would get the link. A bunch of thoughts raced around in my head. I still had severe doubts about his story, but figured I still might find something intriguing if I played along. I told him I was interested in seeing the Virgin Massacre site, but I didn't have any VPN security software. He assured me that wasn't necessary. Killjoy said he screen recorded a video preview of the site as a test to see if I was worthy of seeing the real thing. It was a pretentious answer, but I held my tongue regardless. I clicked the link and was taken to a domain consisting of only the video file. It began playing by itself, showcasing Virgin Massacre in muted yellow letters. A raspy voice like sandpaper emitted from my speakers. This is a rough summary of what I remember. Welcome to the Virgin Massacre. We host thousands of gore-tastic movies for your depraved viewing pleasure. Our main attraction is the ensemble of beautiful young maidens, just ripe for slaughter. Daddy's little princess won't be a princess for long after she's eviscerated by our finest traps. Stay tuned for a movie you'll never forget. The addition of a narrator made me question the validity of the site even more. It felt like more like watching a low-budget movie rather than an actual torture video. 
the creator was passionate about his project, to say the least. The screen shifted to a low-resolution video feed of a girl standing in a room of rotating chainsaws. It's hard to explain, but it looked like the chainsaws were horizontally connected to various pillars that spun in place. The production values of the props were a step above what you would expect from some obscure gore site. Could it have been a scene edited from a movie? I wish the real answer was so innocent. From what I could make out, the girl wore a bloody tattered Japanese schoolgirl uniform despite not having any noticeable Asian features. Her face was scrunched up in an agonizing, teary-eyed scream. She howled and begged to be set free from her captors. The raw anguish in her voice unnerved me to my core. I've seen tons of movies where the actor's performance could easily be mistaken for reality, but this performance wasn't a mistake. It felt real. It felt like torture. I immediately found myself feeling empathy for a girl I'd known for less than a minute. With that said, I didn't look away. I didn't close the video. I needed to know at the very least if she made it out okay. After she cried for a few minutes straight, she finally began moving. She must have realized that there wouldn't be an escape waiting for her. She squeezed her body between two pillars of chainsaws, trying her damnedest not to get hit. I watched with bated breath with every step she took. The roar of grinding metal snuffed out her cries completely. She got far through the room and it almost seemed like she would complete the challenge. She nearly made it out when the left side of her stomach got grazed. The blades cleaved through her flesh effortlessly and left a gaping gash where she was struck. The pain was so great that it caused her to completely lose her composure. She threw her arms around as she cursed her luck and cried a blood-curdling scream. It was hard watching her wobble out of the room while clutching at her wound. She walked down a long corridor of rusted metal until she reached another room filled with traps. This one had bossals strapped to the ground with a uniform amount of distance between each one. The hallway was so cramped that jumping past the bossals was the only way to progress. The girl was visibly terrified and hesitated once again. There wasn't much margin for error. She had to calculate her jumps just right, or else she was done for. I could tell that the stomach wound was causing her focus to wane. The girl took a few steps back to build up momentum for a sprint. Once she took off running, she leaped over the immediate boss of and landed in the middle space. Unfortunately, it wasn't a safe landing. She stumbled once, she touched the ground and fell forward right in front of another boss saw. The moment of impact was obscured by a heavy static filter, but her agonizing screams remained etched into my memory all these months later. A heavy sense of nausea overwhelmed me and I emptied my stomach into a waste bucket by my side. I immediately closed the video and took a moment to regain my composure. Had I just witnessed a real death? Who was that girl? Did her family and friends ever find out what happened to her? Questions with no answers swirled around in my mind to no end. I was just about to contact Killjoy88 when I noticed that the chat log was gone. All the messages were deleted, even my own. I refreshed the page several times to see if it was some glitch, but nothing changed. I even went back to the forum where I met him, but all his posts were also missing. Even the link he sent me wouldn't load. Killjo88 had completely erased his tracks. I would have called the police, but I was certain there was nothing they could do. There was no evidence left anywhere, and they'd probably assume it was some stupid prank call. Killjoy had won, and I was his pawn. The following day, 
I couldn't escape the feeling of someone's gaze burrowing into my soul. Whether I was at home alone or walking to the store, there was a persistent feeling of being watched. I chalked this up to some simple anxiety, considering everything I just went through. Everything would surely go back to normal, right? That delusion was shattered when a text popped on my screen late one night. It contained several images of me from various locations and angles. Me browsing at the bookstore. Me in a bathroom stall. There was even a photo of me sleeping on my bed. My blood became ice and my heart plummeted. I immediately knew that it was Killjoy back for more sadistic torture. Make a choice, the accompanying text read. Become the next sacrifice or select more lambs to take your place. He then sent more images, but they weren't of me. Several women appeared on screen and they were all people I knew. One of them was a bartender from a local pub I sometimes visited. Another was an old classmate of mine from college. One was even a former teacher of mine. Lives were on the line and it was a matter of theirs or mine. The fact that you're reading this should make it clear what choice I made. The missing posters littering the neighborhood are a constant reminder of my own selfishness and cowardness. As bad as it sounds, a part of me is glad I'm still alive. It's been a few months since the incident and I try my best to leave it behind. I haven't been invested in the gore community at all or anything morbid for that matter. Those videos just bring back bad memories. The worst part of watching a murder video is the guilt of not being able to help the victim. Their horrified screams will forever be etched into my psyche. I don't want to see videos of people suffering anymore. It makes my heart sink. If you're a thrill seeker like I used to be, and you get an invite to see the next best gore video, don't go for it. Keep your sanity.